much better. Hey everybody, Jason here, and today I'm gonna to do a short intro and build review for my Hot Bodies D413. Now I have been waiting forever for this car, so I am stoked that it's finally here. Uh, in fact, you know what? Here it is. This thing is absolutely, it, it's, it is a sweet four-wheel car. Now, this is the box right here, and I will take you through the build and through the instructions in just a few seconds. But uh, first, I guess I'd just like to show you the car in general. The car itself is basically the next generation of four-wheel buggy. I mean, the first, when I really made up my what really sold me on buying this car was when I was up in Chico at the 2013 IFMAR Worlds, and in A number two of the four-wheel mains, uh, Cavalier spun out, Ty Tesman was coming in hot, just drilled him because Cavalier spun out and then pulled back out, and obviously there was nowhere for Ty to go, and it just, just, just ripped the front end off of Cavalier's buggy. But in the process of Ty hitting the brakes and then hitting Cavalier, Mayfield slammed into Ty, and Mayfield's car broke. So I guess this thing is pretty strong, whether it's to offense or defense, this thing is a beast. And uh, when I saw that, I just thought, you know, how many of us amateur or rookie or club racers really want, how many of us actually need a car that is super durable? And so the durability, I mean, outside of the handling, the car has looked awesome on every single outing. I mean, Ty won a national championship with it the first time out. I mean, it's just, it's just hard to argue with the car's performance and its durability. And uh, so it's out. I know a lot of you guys are probably waiting on them for pre-orders. I've heard that the pre-orders just went off the chart and, and uh, Hot Bodies couldn't be happier. But uh, I got this car just a couple of days ago. I got it uh, on a Friday around 2.30. I took it to the track and started building it because I was going to race it that uh, Saturday morning at the JBRL. And I just kind of chickened out to be completely honest with you. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to put the car together and just kind of, I didn't want to go out there half-baked with a car that might or might not be super dialed and uh, you know so I, I wanted to take my time do it right I took a file I chamfered all the edges on the carbon and stuff like that so super car let me give you a close-up so you can see exactly what this car is all about okay so here's the actual box that the D413 came in and uh, I'll just show you what's left in the box now that the build is over uh, some stickers it comes with a pretty sweet HPI racing uh, credit card Okay, let's be honest, that's not really a credit card, but it is some type of like a registration card where you can scan it with your phone and check some stuff out. Looks like there might be some information online. Here is the actual manual, and the manual was so ridiculously good. I just, just can't believe. I mean, you open a bag, and you'll see bag A, step one. Then step two, and you just, it's just, everything is just really straightforward. I mean, it tells you like on your diffs right here. Uh, Fill to top of cross shafts with silicone or diff oil. It, you know, you've got some real life measurements. When you start getting into actual the build of the car, there are actual, uh, basically you can build the car with the, with the uh, shorty or with the saddles. And there are different diagrams for assembling the car each way. But when you actually get into the actual build, you know, just like a Tamiya manual, there are screw sizes that are one to one right on the page so that you can match everything up. So just overall, just a very, very good build. So that's it. Um, I haven't, obviously I haven't had to open up the servo, the, the servo stuff or the uh, motor mount just yet. Here is what you get with the car. It comes with all the extra sway bars, comes with the extra pieces for mounting the, the saddles. Now I chose to use the shot cups that actually had the, uh, the sweet mud guards on them, but you don't have to, you could just use these ones. Here are the small, uh, take this out of here. That's the small associated size hex that you can use if you want to run the associated wheels. Uh, extra pistons, including pistons that can be drilled. So extra arm mounts for changing, you know, changing kick up and, and, and caster and stuff like that. Kick up and anti-squat. So overall, just a really, 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 really good kit. So far, I am just super stoked. Okay, so you can see uh, the car has a carbon fiber chassis. It's got these really elaborate high level uh, braced uh, shock towers. The carbon fiber, the towers themselves are actually carbon fiber. I don't know how well you can see in the video. Now, uh, the car comes with these sweet uh, mud guards, and uh, everybody was kind of giving me a hard time for putting the mud guards on there. And uh, uh, <laughs> I think the mud guards are sweet. I'm leaving the mud guards just in case you're wondering. 
The orange anodizing looks really good on the aluminum shot collars and on a few different pieces and the little stays for the sway bar and stuff like that. Um, I'm just, I'm just really stoked about how well this car went together. Um, I built a variety of B44s, a ton of associated products, but this car just built really, really amazingly well. Let me pop the body off real quick and I'll show you guys what it's all about. Now these body clips are on here look with like the Vulcan death grip. So I'm actually going to use my players to take them off. So the body comes in four pieces, which is kind of cool because it actually has like an undercut to it, kind of like formula one. Basically you get, uh, you get the fuselage, this top piece, and you get these two edges and then you get a nose piece. Now the nose piece actually stays in the car. So this is the nose piece and it stays in the car. Now I've got this car set up to run a saddle and then your electronics over here. And uh, basically what you end up doing is if you, if, or I'm sorry, a shorty. I've got the car set up to run a shorty. If you wanna run saddles, you just turn the motor and the center diff assembly all the way around and it allows you to run it that way. And then you just flip the servo to the other side. But anyways, I'm sure you guys knew all that stuff. So let me tell you what you didn't know. Uh, when you build this car, who would have ever thought that an RC company would finally send you a kit where one bag is one step. So you open a bag that says bag A, step one, and it's the, the front shocks. Bag A, step two is the rear shocks. You don't have an, a pile of extra screws and parts laying around. It's pretty nice. This car was literally the best building 10 scale that I've ever built. The instructions, while they don't have like a lot of uh, written instructions, they have awesome illustrations or diagrams, whatever you want to call them, and it's really easy to see what needs to happen and what needs to go where. There are a couple little there are a couple little issues like with the uh, with the actual arm mounts and stuff that are pretty elaborate. There are a couple issues kind of seeing exactly which way some of the pieces face, but if you pay pretty close attention, it's really not hard to figure out. Um, this thing, it, the arms mount unlike anything you've ever seen. They actually uh, there's actually aluminum inserts in the in the actual diff cases. And so the arms actually go in and then hinge pins go through and you can shim everything with washers and it's just, it is just high level, man. It is just a really nice kit. The shocks went together really well. They come with bladders, but from what I understand, uh, Ty doesn't run any bladders. He cuts the bladders out and runs them all emulsion. So I'll be doing that. It, it has you build the kit with four hole one threes and four hole one fours. So it's basically like a low C55 piston up front. But in almost every setup that I've checked on Ty Tessman's website, he's running a two hole 1.6 up front and a two hole 1.7 in the back. Uh, the car comes with 10,000, 100,000, 10,000 in the diffs. And apparently uh, the word on the street is, actually the truth is the word from the Tessman camp is that 10,000 might be a little bit aggressive if you're not a super high bite surface. So head down to four or five or something like that in the back and it'll probably be better. Um, the build was just, I, I was just really surprised. The plastics are really nice. The build was really nice. Um, my only gripe and the whole, I got two gripes for this whole kit from building it. One, I was, obviously it's a metric kit and you end up having to use a 50 thousandths wrench on like the small screws that hold the plates onto the top of the arms and stuff like that, like the stiffening plates. And the screws that hold the diff together are 50 thousandths. Now I haven't talked to Torrance or Ty or any of those specifically about that. But I do know that a 50 thou is a 1.3 millimeter or they're, they're, they're basically one and the same. But maybe they put those really small screws to hold the disc together because they wanted less rotating weight. It makes sense. But uh, speaking of the diffs, they actually come with all metal gears, which is really nice. You know, there's really only two buggies out there right now, in my opinion, that are like next generation four wheel drive buggies. This buggy and the X-Ray. I know the low C buggies out there, but I've just found that too many club racers have, have, have found it to be fragile where this and the x-ray, they're just built beefy. The only downside to the x-ray is the plastic diff gears, which takes you back to this. If you want a next level, super fast, super tunable, and super durable four wheel drive buggy, this is really your only option. I and mean, this is it. This, this buggy is the next generation of four wheel drive buggies. The center diff, I mean, not only does the center diff offer more tunability for the platform, but it protects your drivetrain. If you land rear wheel first on throttle, it'll transfer some of that power up to the front wheel so that you don't shock everything. I mean, I don't know that it needs to protect the drivetrain because it's all steel and steel gears and everything, but it's nice that it does. So, now a couple things that I wish the kit would have came with that it didn't come with. 
uh, titanium turnbuckles. Um, the four-piece body, it's a pain in the butt to cut out. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's cool that it kind of wraps in and everything like that, but it did take me quite a while to cut it out, dremel it smooth. And if you're a painter, you'd probably have to paint over one edge and under the other and stuff like that. So it's, it's a little bit elaborate, but uh, I've got an answer for you for that. Basically, the turnbuckles on this car are 34, 38, and 48 millimeters. You need two, two turnbuckles in each length. And that's Lunds, I did some math for you. So Lunsford part number 1064, 1065, and 1068. So if you buy the Lunsford, if you buy those Lunsford turnbuckles, they should fit just fine. Now Proline has a Type R body. It's 3417-00. Ordered it last night. Can't wait for it to get here. That's what Ty's running. Looks great. And it's one piece, so I'm all for that. Or maybe it's two pieces. It might be a nose and the rest of the body. But either way, it doesn't have the little bolts on the top like this one does. One last little thing that you might want to get your hands on for, for like spots like, like right here and stuff like that are the orange nuts that HPI offers just to make it look trick. And that's HPI 104-120. Other than that, that's really about all you'll need. Um, so there's just, there's just so much. There, obviously, there's a lot more to come. I've got some cool videos that I'm going to be working on. I'm going to be putting all my electronics in this. One last, you know what? There's one last piece of information I want to share with you guys before I cut this video short. <clears throat> this car comes with 13 millimeter hexes front and rear, but in the box, it comes with 10 millimeter hexes so that you can run the wheels that come with the car or you can run associated wheels. So for all you B44 guys that were looking for gear discs and didn't want to spend a couple of hundred bucks, you can migrate to this platform and your hundreds of dollars of the wheels and tires will bolt right on. So major bonus. So hope you guys enjoyed this short review. Stay tuned for more upcoming videos, including the electronics install and actually running this buggy. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.